in abundance is that we restore. We restore. And I pray the Lord will help every one of us who will do the right thing in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Leviticus chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. You cannot say you. You reconcile if you have stolen something belonging to another person and you refuse to restore that. You refuse to make the restitution. Restoration includes restitution. That's what God told Abimelech in Leviticus chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie to his neighbor, in that which was delivered into king, or in fellowship, or in a sin taken away by violence, or has deceived his neighbor, and have found that which was lost, and lies concerning it, and sweareth falsely in any of all these that the man doeth sinning therein, then it shall be, because he has sinned, and is guilty, that he shall, what's the next word? Restore. You see, that's the word of God. Uniform word of God everywhere to reconcile with our neighbor whom we have offended and we're taking something away from that neighbor. We reconcile, we restore what we have taken. And the word of God says, I shall restore that which he took away violently and on the sin which he has deceitfully gotten. Or that which was delivered into him, or lost thing which he found. I pray God will help us to do it very quickly, immediately, in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 14. Ezekiel 33, reading from verse 14. Again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And you know, sometimes when God speaks emphatically, we say peremptorily, that he says, thou shalt surely die. There's some people that say, okay, God said I will die. And he used the word surely. What can I do? I will die. No, you don't have to die. You will not die. I said you will not die. There is always a way out from condemnation. There's always a way out from judgment. There's always a way out from anything God says he wants to do, which will not be all right for our lives. What is it? That verse 14. When I say that, I shall surely that if he turn from his sin, that's repentance, and do that which is lawful and right, Numbers 15, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had wrought, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he will not die. With repentance and reconciliation, he will not die. I said with repentance and reconciliation, you will not die. Abundant life will be ours in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 5. These are the words of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, your Savior, your Lord. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring the gift to the altar, and then remembrest that thy brother has ought against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar. Don't take the gift away. God loves you. God appreciates your gift. God appreciates your talent. God appreciates your service. And you know what some people do? 
Well, they say, something is wrong with my life. So and so has urged against me. I was to serve the Lord. I was to offer my gift, my talent, my skill to the Lord. But since so and so has something against me, I am useless. No, you are not useless. I am worthless. No, you are not worthless. I cannot offer anything to the Lord. No, you can offer something to the Lord. He didn't say take the gift away. He said, keep your gift there before the altar. You say, Lord, I consecrate my life to you. This is wrong. I'm going to put it right. I'm feeling unhappy about this relationship between me and brother so-and-so, between me and sister so-and-so. I'm going to put it right. I'm going to reconcile. It doesn't mean you'll never serve the Lord again, that your gifts are no more welcome in the sight of the Lord. Of course, they're welcome. Leave there, then give before the altar, and go thy way. But, do what? I said, do what? Be reconciled to thy brother. And then, after that word, then come, offer thy gift. Why is it? Even some people have reconciled. You've settled everything. Now your way is clear before God and man, between God and you, between you and God, and between you and your fellow brother, your fellow sister, and everybody else. And you know by the grace of God, there's no condemnation in your heart anymore. And yet you are still pulling back because of that thing that happened to you. How many years ago now the Lord said, your gift is still before the altar, come back and offer that gift, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Number one is repentance. Number two is reconciliation. Number three is righteousness. Righteousness through the Savior. Righteousness belongs to us. We shall enjoy it in Jesus' name. Through Christ, we have righteousness. Through the sacrifice of Christ, we have righteousness. And through the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, He has set us free. We are free indeed in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Being then made free from sin, he became the servants of righteousness. We are not the slaves of sin anymore. We are now the servants of righteousness. Christ has made us righteous. Christ has brought his righteousness into our lives. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Romans 5, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, by the obedience of one, the obedience of Christ, many shall be made righteous. The Lord will make you righteous. In his power, in his grace, in his strength, by the partnership we sustain with Christ, by the presence of Christ in your life, that's how you become righteous. Rest in the Lord, and righteousness will be yours in Jesus' name. Your past sins are forgiven, your past sins are forgotten. And the righteousness of Christ now imparted, imputed unto you. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us. That means to be the sin offering. To be the sacrifice for sin. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are now made the righteousness of God in Christ. That's why the Lord is saying, walk according to your calling. Walk according to the new life that God has given you already. You have it. Walk like that. I said walk like that. You'll walk in righteousness in Jesus' name. And then the fullness of the blessings of the Lord will be yours without any subtraction. There'll be addition, multiplication in your life, but no subtraction. 
in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Then it says in verse 22 that he put up concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. A new life has come. The blood of Jesus will renew our lives in Jesus' name. Now that he put on the old man, put it on, put it on. In the morning, after you have taken your bath, you put on a clean dress. And after the blood of Jesus Christ has washed you, and has cleansed you, and has made you righteous, now you put on the new man. And then it says, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This is what we have, brothers and sisters, and I pray it will be permanent in our lives. Taking these steps will get into that spiritual fulfillment. That spiritual fulfillment. Step number one, repentance. Step number two, reconciliation. Step number three, then we have righteousness. What did we have? The spiritual fulfillment is Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Psalm 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people had hacking unto me. And Israel had walked in my ways. The Lord is saying, if my people are busy, that all it takes is number one, repentance. Number two, reconciliation. Number three, righteousness. Then the wonderful resource will follow. Verse 14, I should soon have subdued their enemies. Taking those steps between you and the Almighty God, all enemies are subdued before you in Jesus' name and turned my hands against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. Your time will endure forever. He should have fed them also for the finest of the witch. Taking those steps, repentance, reconciliation, righteousness, God is giving us assurance that they will feed us with the finest of the wheat and then with honey out of the rod shall I have satisfied them. Water out of the rod, more than that. Milk out of the rod, more than that. Honey out of the rod, you will have. Sweetness will come to your life. Satisfaction will come to your life. Joy will come to your life. We're ready to take those steps. Are we ready? I said we're ready. How many of you are ready? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I thank you. You promised abundance for me, spiritual fulfillment for me. Now I'm going to enjoy everything that you have promised me because you have shown me the steps that I need to take, indispensable steps that I need to take so that I can get into that spiritual fulfillment. Open your mouth, my brothers and sisters, and talk to the Lord. Repentance, check up your eye. Don't allow the devil to cheat you out of the spiritual fulfillment you ought to have and turn away and cast away everything that God does not appreciate in our lives. Repentance of all sins. And if you are just coming to this place for the first time, and you have seen other people coming to know the Lord, and you have not surrendered yourself unto the Lord, surrender yourself to the Lord. That's repentance. That's repentance. Coming away from everything that is sinful. Just between you and God there right now, you say, Lord, I thank you that you have conditioned my mind, my heart, to turn towards you so that blessing will be mine blessing will be mine and the blessings are coming to you right now just say lord i'm sorry for the past that's all that's all 
God is not expecting to roll on the ground and feel that I'm a miserable, wretched, dirty, condemned person. The Lord knows that already. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I cast away all my iniquity, all my sin. And Lord, I turn to you now. And I accept the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. I accept. I accept what Christ did for me on the cross of Calvary. Then the Lord says, you are forgiven. Then say, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. And because the Lord has reconciled you to himself, take that joy to your neighbors, to your friends, to your brothers and sisters, and reconcile with them. Break down every wall of partition between you and your fellow brother, your fellow sister, and your neighbors. Reconcile. Be friendly now, be friendly now, be loving now. And everything that has been negative in your thoughts, in your attitude, your brother, to your sister, to your neighbor, can solve that and be reconciled. And then accept the righteousness of Christ. It is yours. Jesus was righteous through and through. And he wants to give you his righteousness as a gift. And say, Lord, I accept. Lord, I receive the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to walk in righteousness for the rest of my life. It's all by grace, by the help of God. And it is yours, it is mine, it is ours in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, If you have taken those steps, and you want spiritual renewal in your life, refreshing in your life, abundance in your life, everybody, are you waiting for that? Are you waiting for renewal? Are you waiting for abundance? Are you waiting for a breakthrough? Why don't you raise up those hands unto the Almighty God? Or you're raising up your hand, you are touching the Almighty God. And you are touching the miracle power of the Lord. And you are touching that refreshing. It will come in your life in Jesus' name. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that God discriminates against no one. There's no discrimination. There's no discrimination. All of us are blessed. I said all of us are blessed. Just take those steps and you're through. Repent, reconcile, be righteous, and the blessings of God will flow into your life. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for everyone here. I pray, oh Lord, your blessings will flow down into the life of everyone in Jesus.